Uh, you... Hi, and welcome to the podcast for Eden Rock. Today you are joined by Mrs. Aptar, Mrs. Sajid, and Miss Francis. I'll be starting off with reading the poem Eden Rock. They are waiting for me somewhere beyond Eden Rock. My father, 25, in the same suit of genuine Irish tweed, his terrier Jack, still two years old and trembling at his feet. My mother, 23, in a sprig dress, drawn at the waist, ribbon in her straw hat, has spread the stiff white cloth over the grass. Her hair, the colour of wheat, takes on the light. She pours tea from a thermos, the milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle. A screw of paper for a cork slowly sets out the same three plates, the tin cups painted blue. The sky whitens as if lit by three suns. My mother shades her eyes and looks my way over the drifted stream. My father spins a stone along the water leisurely. They beckon to me from the other bank. I hear them call. See where the stream path is. Crossing is not as hard as you may think. I have, had not thought that it would be like this. Okay, to summarise the poem Eden Rock, um, we can say that it's an encounter between the speaker and his parents. It's suggested that his parents are dead and we can also suggest um, that he, the speaker is close to death and would like to rejoin his parents in the afterlife. Um, so the next thing that you should know is the context. Now, um, Kozli himself um, had lost his father when he was seven years old and that was because his father was... Um, a part of World War One, and he actually passed from his injuries because they were really severe. Now, as he was growing up, uh, Causey kept a lot of his life very private, and he didn't want to share his life in an autobiography. And he stated that this was because everything that you need to know about his life is actually written in his poems. If you read his poems, you will learn more about how he felt and how his life was as he grew up. Um, also, Causey didn't actually get married, and as you'll see later on, um, it could be because of the fact that he saw what it feels like if you lose your other half or people that were actually close to you. Some key themes of the poem are childhood, um, religion and parental love. So now moving on to language, as it's one of the things that you need to be able to discuss when you are writing your response for this poem. Um, if you start off from the beginning of the poem, you will look at you, can, you will be able to see that in the first and second stanza that he talks a lot about how his mother and father looked. So you've got the genuine Irish tweed, his terrier jack, um, and then he talks about how his mother was wearing a sprigged dress. You've got a range of different adjectives and nouns, and all these show you um, the detail of how his parents looked. And if you are going to be analysing this, you'll be able to understand that. He obviously paid a lot of attention to his parents and the fact that he's paying attention to them means he must have spent a lot of time with them. So he was very, um, very close with them. Um, and then as you keep going down, again, he mentions things like tea from a thermos, milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle. Again, all these nouns of different things are telling you a little bit about how close they were. So though they don't have um, expensive things to put their tea or you know the sauce bottles they the fact that these little things are around them it obviously matters to them they're important to him they are part of his memory and for someone to remember all these little little details it's because they cherish their moments and they stand out to him shall we have a look at the structure of the um short sentence at the end of the poem yep so the last sentence of the poem is i had not thought that it would be like this and you could say the reason why it's a single line at the end um, after having paragraphs that are quite consistent is to show how lonely and isolated he feels without his family um, he wants to be with them he craves them but he can't uh, be with them and that's a really tough thing for him to deal with just like um, any of us would feel being isolated from our families um, I guess it also shows his uncertainty surrounding whether he should stay in this life or join his parents in the afterlife, he's, um, he's unsure surrounding that decision that he'll need to make. So it feels like he, he needs to make a decision in terms of should he be ending his life to join his parents in the afterlife because he doesn't feel like he belongs here without them yeah. and he craves their sort of um, company. Their company and their comfort. And the if comfort you, that they bought him. Yeah, if you look at the whole poem as well, the tone in the whole poem actually shows that he feels a little sad and a little lonely because it doesn't mention anyone other than his parents who we assume have 
obviously they're not still here with him and at the end it makes you feel even more worried and concerned for him because you think hang on is it that upset that he actually doesn't want to live anymore and actually wants to cross over to be with them uh, and them being obviously in heaven for him yeah you could say that the tone changes because when he's talking about his parents in the beginning it's really positive it's really mm -hmm. bright it shows how happy he was when they were there and then um the last couple of um stanzas it shows that they're not here anymore and it's made a huge impact on his life and like miss said earlier um he didn't really get into a serious relationship where he got married because he feared loss he feared the loss of someone he loved he didn't allow himself to love and um that that just shows in how lonely he was at the end because he has no one to live for but he has people to die for yeah so um the last thing obviously you need to know is how to compare this poem to another one that's very similar so we can start off with follower um in follower obviously you have a young boy who looks up to his father and describes the detail that his father um in detail how his father looks when he's obviously working on the farm and how his shoulders are globed and in in this poem in um Young rock you also again got the speaker talking in detail about how his father looked so the similarity is that both the speakers in these poems obviously looked up to their parents and cherished them and they wanted um they spent a lot of time with them as well um so that's probably one of the similar poems you can compare it to um we could also compare Eden Rock to Letters from Yorkshire in the sense that the themes can connect. Um, we have the theme of separation and distance in Letters from Yorkshire, which we also have in Eden Rock. Um, so that's also a connection that you could make there. Um, in Letters from Yorkshire, the speaker is estranged from um, her father, or it could be a friend. And this can also link to the separation that we see in Eden Rock. And I think, Miss, you must I think you said it earlier that um, the separation is there, but in Letters from Yorkshire, they can obviously still see each other. But yeah, in um, Eden Rock, he has no choice. He actually can't see his family or his parents because they're not even alive anymore. So you've got quite a few comparisons there that you can obviously look into further when you are looking at the poem. Um, Thank you for joining our podcast today. Farewell. <laughs>